Welcome back. Welcome back. It's time for an episode of world building. Yesterday, if you remember, we found that our hex is actually hills and mountains. So we, we need to start filling that out. Um, in our our little town has a small uh, lost tomb nearby, and we have been delving and uh, pillaging its depths for our treasure. And last episode, we had our first casualty, Theros the Elf. Um, but Augustus and Franklin both came out with quite a bit of treasure. So... What we're going to do is we are going to try to resolve some downtime for them and see if we can't push them over the line uh, and make them level two. So what that means is there are activities inside the downtime and domain book that we talked about that they can where they can spend their gold. They have uh, Augustus has over twelve hundred. Franklin has eleven hundred, almost twelve hundred and they can spend their gold to earn XP. Now, some of these activities can um, be dangerous if they fail to meet certain criteria. So what we're gonna do is we are going to advance their clock. These activities take about a week. So yesterday, according to our calendar, we can always pull out our trusty calendar, was October 21st. The third delve, they got 1,950 gold they took away. They split that down the middle. Franklin's at 1,400. He needs 2,000 to level up. So he's quite a while away. I don't know if he's going to be able to get there. Augustus is at 1,366. I think he needs 1,500. So what this activity will do, they come out of the dungeon here on the next day. They start this downtime activity, and it will keep them busy for seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They will finish this activity, and on the 29th, they will be able to adventure again because we use one-to-one -one time. We use the rule. Uh, it's, it's a variant rule. It's not in the books, but it, what it does is it creates a dynamic world. This rule says that it, a one day that passes in the real world, one day passes in the game world. So... Um, what it allows us to do is it allows us to invest into our character a, a, a valuable resource outside of gold, time, to improve them. We could spend time improving their stats. We could um, spend time building keeps and cathedrals to, uh, to build their power structures. This week, we're going to send Franklin and Augustus on a philanthropy job. So they're gonna spend a week raising gold and um, and raising awareness for a local cause, a, a, a lawful good cause, maybe spreading the, the word of Theron. Um, and then this will lock them up for a while. So what we'll need to do is roll up some new characters. And we're not gonna build the characters all on the camera because that takes a long time and I don't know how entertaining it actually is. But we are gonna roll up their stats so you guys can see what they are. I'll roll up their gold and then I'll think about what class they'll be. And then when it comes time to roll hit points, I'll do that on camera once all the character sheet is filled out, okay? So we're gonna start with resolving their downtime. We'll roll up some new characters. Then we are getting into the very exciting prospect filling out our hex. We have a six mile hex here, and you can see there's little tiny sub hexes inside. This will be, uh, it's a mountainous and hilly terrain, and it will be filled with monster layers, dungeons, and really strange and wa wacky things. And as our new teams are exploring the hexes, days will pass, but we'll be able to uncover new potential adventures. And so that's what we're gonna do today. Build the six mile hex that we live in. But that will be last. Let's get started. We've already been talking for several minutes now, so let's go ahead and just get this ball rolling. The gold split yesterday, uh, I, I was unable to do mental math. It's actually kind of challenging to do very easy math whenever you're on camera and you're on the spot. But everybody got, uh, the two who survived, 975. They each got 975 gold each. So really, really nice. So let's go ahead and, oh, I wonder, is my cord even on the camera? Let's move that cord back. 
so it's not dangling in the way the whole time. All right, so let's open up the downtime book. We're gonna look at the first, the first downtime activity. It's called carousing. And we're gonna send our boys into a philanthropy week, a week of just serving the community, okay? So what that means is each character can trade their cash for experience. They're gonna roll a D8 and multiply it by 100. That's the amount of gold that they spent in the one week. Uh, it, you know, it, it costs gold to make gold, I suppose. Um, the character engages in one of the several activities. We're choosing philanthropy. They spend gold on a worthy social group, and at the end of the week, they make a save versus spells. Now, both of these guys are not great with spell saves, 15 and 16, respectively. So we're probably going to fail the save, and we'll have some kind of consequence because... Um, if it was easy, it wouldn't be worth it. So, uh, hopefully we can roll high, bump this guy up to level two, bump this guy up to level two. They spent the week doing that. If it's not high enough, we could spend another week in downtime, um, uh, because I really want to push them to level two. I want to get those hit points up so that way, uh, he can get his spells and they can survive more than one hit. Um, because if we learned any lesson from Theros and, and, uh, I think his name was Nolrad or whatever. <laughs> you die quickly in this game. So let's start with that. Augustus is red, so he's going to roll a d8 and a d20. Franklin is blue, a d8 and a d20. All right, we want to roll high. Okay, so I think Franklin fails with a 15. Let's see. Yeah, they both fail by one. They, they both fail just by one. Oh, but you know what's interesting is they both get 400 experience points. So we're going to set that aside for a second. 400 experience. That puts him at 18. This puts him... Oh, he's well over into level two. Okay, that's good enough for now. But since they failed, now... They have to roll on a d10 each to see what is the negative outcome for uh, for fa having failed against their spell. So they spent the gold, they get the reward, they get the 400 XP, they spend 400 gold. So it's a it's a nice one to one trade there. But now, what's the outcome for having failed their their save? Okay, so Augustus has won. One is a care. Uh, the charity is a front for a vicious gang. Start the next session with a broken arm. Cannot use to four, for four to six weeks or a broken leg. They get minus three movement for four to six weeks. Ouch. Okay, so you know Augustus spent all this time trying to raise money, and he 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 goes to deliver the money. It turns out to be a, a front, and it's a it's a tough it's a it's a bunch of hooligans, and they rough him up, and they take his treasure. Okay, so what we're going to do to see if it's four or uh, four, to, uh, it's either four to six. So we can just roll uh, a, a d3. If it's a one, it's plus zero, plus one, or plus two. Okay, so it's going to be a plus one. So it's going to be five weeks, five weeks of a broken arm. Okay, so what I'm going to do my boy here, ouch, sad to say, starting here, this is when he comes out of downtime, he 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 gets his arm broken. So we count out our five weeks, one, well, one, two, three, four, five, ah, so it's actually in December, I think it's, December. that must be December, December probably December 2nd, we'll see, we'll, che we'll check that on the calendar, but I'm going to write it here, Augustus has a broken arm, which means... Broken arm, which means he's not going to be able to wield a weapon and a shield. I think I'll probably just keep the shield. Um, yeah, and then like he just he'll just stay in the back line like before. Turn undead with his shield hand, cast a healing spell with his heel hand. Um, Augustus in downtime. We'll put that here. D T. Uh, yeah, we'll just say downtime, uh, and then also Franklin's going to come out at the same time. Well, you know what? We have time to find out. Let's see. So, 
if Augustus gets 400 XP, let's turn to the Cleric page. All right, Cleric is on page 36 of the Player's Handbook. So with, with the 400, he actually gets uh, a little bit more than 400. Um, but with the 400, that puts him at 17. Yeah, so we're going to put this here. He's going to get a little bit more than that. But okay, so now he is officially level two. Or he will be when he comes out of time, uh, whenever he comes out of his time jail. So we're going to put a level two here. All right. Hit points. We're going to roll a d6. And we're going to add one. Okay. The worst possible outcome. I realize I rolled that off screen. <sighs> the worst possible outcome. Just a one. So he gets two hit points. So he's at seven. Now, that does mean that he is going to be able to live through one hit, which is good, as long as the, the monster is using a d6, which most monsters do. Okay, so he got seven hit points. Okay. Now, Franklin, on the other hand, when he gets his 400, that puts him at 18. So he is still shy. So we could do another week of downtime, but first we need to find out, oh, he rolled an eight on his, uh, on his D10. Let's see what, what happens to him. And if that's wrong, we can always look back in the, uh, on the uh, playback and make the adjustment if I forgot, but I'm pretty sure that was, uh, he rolled a, an eight on the D10. An eight is during a toast, the character's pressure to give more uh, generously, spend one D10 times 10 more gold. Oh my goodness. Okay. That is a zero. So that's actually a 10. So he has to spend another hundred gold. Oh man. Oh man. Okay. So minus 500 from Franklin. That puts him at 693 minus 500 or 400. Puts him at 8. 34. Okay, so what I'm thinking is um, I have the gold. I could, yeah, I could go ahead and keep Franklin in downtime for a little while longer, bump him down for another week into November. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, okay, we're going to do that. So, Franklin, one more adventure. Let's try to remember to roll where you guys can see it. All right, if I roll high enough, I don't have any, like, negative here. <laughs> okay, I did roll high enough to not uh, have any down, uh, any consequence, but I got 100. 100 XP and I lost 100 gold. Okay, so there's no negative here. Get 100 more. That puts me at 931. And there's some, uh, there is some, like, bonus there as well. So I also got uh, an additional 50. So I'm actually at because I get a 10% bonus, I'm actually at 1981. I can uh, do some, uh, there's an activity where I can sp spend a dormant. Oh, here's here's what it is. A character can, uh, cannot spend over 50 gold a day, but um, they can exchange a maximum of 200 gold for 100 points of experience. I will just spend one day and 50 gold to bump him up over the line, which will put him out of his time jail, not on November the 4th, which is what this day will be, November 4th. It'll actually be November 5th, Franklin comes out. So I, th what does that mean for my game? I, it means I cannot, I cannot play with these characters until Augustus on the 28th, but he'll have a broken arm, and Franklin on November 5th. Okay, so what does that mean? We're making new characters. We're going to explore different dungeons, different parts of the of the hex, and and fill out the world a little bit more. But before we do, we have ba -ba -ba -bum, hit points to roll. He is a level two bro. This will put him uh, another fifty here. Thousand 
31. Okay. Um, we're going to roll a d8 and add zero. Another five. He's got 10 hit points. Oh, he's so chunky now. Excellent. Excellent. So he can definitely take a blow. That's good. All right. Level two will serve him well. All right. So say goodbye to Augustus and Franklin for a while. They're going to be off um, working on their philanthropy, getting roughed up in his case. Uh, this guy is going to uh, be working on philanthropy for an, an extended period, um, and his downtime was a he, uh, his bon his punishment was he had to spend a little bit more gold than everybody else. But um, let's go ahead and spin that fifty here. Six forty three. Okay. All right. So say goodbye to these fellas for a while. We will come back to them later. Uh, in the meantime. I'll set this book aside. We will be using this book today. All right, so we talked about the gold split. We resolved the downtime. We set their time jail. We leveled them up. Excellent. Let's roll the new team. So what I did was I made uh, four characters here. One of these guys will join Franklin and Augustus's team, and the other three will be their own adventuring party. Um... Or maybe these four will adventure together in the coming weeks because I, I'm busy like Franklin and Gustus aren't going to be around for a while so what we need are 3d6 which ones have the best juju Ooh, I think this white one was rolling really well for me yesterday because um it was like low damage again uh, as the enemy so I really liked that one uh okay yeah so we'll, we'll uh pull this one out all right so we're just going the rules say 3d6 down the line I'm going to keep it to where you guys can see it hopefully you can I think you can here All right, then I just write it in as we go. I'm going to write it with a marker too. Let's just put it right here. Okay, here we go. First stat. Okay, we have an 11 for the first stat. Intelligence for the first. Okay, that's a 12. These are both plus zero modifiers, so nothing special yet, but that's okay. You don't really... I mean, you want to have some high stats. That's a 12. Not bad. You want to have high stats, but it's not the be-all, end-all, like in 5th edition or even 3rd edition. Okay, 14. Hey, we have a positive dex. We've got ourselves a thief, maybe, an assassin. Oh, always with the bad cons, though, with the assassins. What's up with that? It's like Destiny or something. 7. Hey, here we go. 14 charisma. You know, it could be like a bard. Because bards want to be like be in the back, blasting stuff. They have a charisma uh, as their prime requisite. Okay. Let's look at how much gold. Okay. Ele uh, 110 gold. All right, let's move on to the next guy. I am going to take some time thinking about the classes, though. I'm not just going to jump straight into something. I'll, I want to make sure that the team is solid. Okay. That is a 13 strength. I love a positive strength modifier. Having that bonus to hit is nice. Hey, 12. Cool. Oh, very, very nice. That is a uh, 14. We have... A really interesting character coming along here. Eh, not that great, man. That is an 11 total. Con, come on. High hit points. Oh, I think I cursed myself. Two seven cons. Those are both minus one cons. Ugh. Yikes. This guy is not charming in any way. He has a six charisma. Oof. Okay, but, you know, he could just be like a big, tough, meat, meaty guy up top. This could be a paladin. Uh, I do wish I had, like, a better charisma, though. We'll see. Let's see Let's see if he can even be a, a paladin. We'll have to determine that later. Character number three, here we go. Okay, a ten. The reason why I keep putting the lid back on this is it's a micron, and they dry out, and they're actually pretty useful, so I don't want that to happen. Uh, okay, uh, ten. Vanilla Man. 
Hey, 13 wisdom. Could be a druid. Could be the druid I was looking for. 12, okay. You, you can't make it up. Three sevens in the con so far. Yikes. 11, 12, 13, 14 charisma. Wow, okay, so I see here we have a 14 charisma, 14 charisma, seven con, seven con. That's funny. Okay, uh, last guy. Maybe we'll have one guy with a positive hit point modifier. Strength first. Okay, yeah, 11, not bad. It is what it is, we'll take it. Yikes. Yeah, just, just not great. He is a he is not an intelligent fellow. He's a little slow on the uptake. Oh no! And he's not wise. Uh, this guy might be meat shield number one. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Oh, oh no! Uh, five six. What? No, dude. No. Eleven. Boopity boopity boop and charisma seven. Uh, yeah, wow, that is just absolutely terrible. Um, okay, so what we have here? Oh, we gotta roll the gold too. I forgot to do that. Uh, all right, so uh, uh, for dude number two times ten. Man, yikes, he's a little bit broke, huh? Hundred gold. And 90 gold. Okay. Man, maybe I should have put these dice away after they were like pulling out ones and twos repeatedly. But okay, so this, these, uh, these are the new character line, stat lines. We'll see what we can uh, turn it into. I think we have uh, some positives here. This is pretty good uh, aside from like the back end. Generally pretty good. We can make something with that. This guy's solid. Okay, uh, this guy's just, uh, we're going to put him in the front. He might just be like a, well, he doesn't have a negative on his con, so we could just like a dwarf. Dwarves are just great because like they can see in the dark. They have infravision. They detect room traps. They notice like little like curves and manipulations in the, in the dungeon. They're actually pretty useful. And as long as I can like make the stat line. Uh, meet the uh, prerequisites, then we can we can have a th uh, a dwarf here. But we need to move on because this episode is going to be quite long building the hex. So let's get started building the hex. So in every hex, every six mile hex, it's filled up with thirty one sub hexes. Now uh, we have planted ourselves over here on the far little nook corner. And I think what's gonna be over here is all ocean. So that will explain the constant influx of more people. So we're gonna have the ocean here and I'll color all of this once we fill everything in. So we've got an ocean here. And so this will, this will there will be like a little dock here where the ships can come in and drop off fresh recruits. So maybe uh, our town is just a small settlement from another kingdom. Um, but what else is in the wild terrains, these hills? these hills we're going to find out so every six mile hex either has a fort like a, a castle or a fortification or it does not have one so this is basically just an evens and odds rolls and um, if it's evens there will be one if not if it's odds there will not be one okay there is going to be a fortification somewhere in this hex there's going to be a castle i have my d trusty d30 we're not going to uh, have anything in our uh, 31st subhex. Everything else is going to be out here to be discovered. Just because we know as the dungeon master where everything is, our PCs will not know where things are. So I will have to send a group with with some with an army, um, whatever we can afford, and we're going to scout out each space. And the next episode will be that process, like what it is that we're up to and how we uncover all of the other dungeons in the world. So uh, let's see, we have a fort, so we need to know. Let me just make sure you guys can see this. Oh, uh, oh bumped it, bumped it, I knew that would happen. Okay, so, sorry, might give you a motion sickness. All right, here we go. So what, 
subhex is it in? 26. We have, oh, it's not far actually. We have a castle here. I'm going to go ahead and just draw like a little pencil castle and we can fill it up and make it perfect later. But for now, we've got some battlements and a little low bridge. Okay. Now, we're going to find out like who is it that owns this castle? We really, really, really need it to be a friend. We need it to be a friendly, lawful <laughs> cleric or a lawful fighter. Uh, we, we will turn to, to determine who is in this castle. We turn to page 142. And it says stronghold here. So um, there's a list of either an arcane magic user, a divine cleric or a paladin, or a fighter or a knight type. These are the three different types of class that will be inside the, the, the keep who will actually rule this space. So uh, one, two, or how about this? One, two, three. I have a D3, so let's use it. Two, it's a, it's a spellcaster. It's a divine spellcaster, either a cleric or a paladin. Now, uh, one, lawful, two, neutral, three, chaotic. It is an evil overlord. <laughs> it's an evil overlord. Uh, we're going to have to steer clear of him and his uh, his armies. So uh, what will happen is this guy will have, uh, let's see, he's got, it he says he's a D8 plus six. So, all right, let's see. He is a level eight divine spellcaster. So evens, cleric, odd, paladin. He is a paladin, so he is a uh, a chaos knight. Is what he is. So he's a he's a, a, a level eight chaos knight. So we're gonna go ahead and put that here. Check yes, level. Oh, I'm writing over here. Level eight chaos knight. Now the rule book says that paladins must be lawful, um, but in the carcass crawlers there is an alternate. Uh, the anti-paladin class called the Chaos Knight, and we're going to use him as our template to rule this space. So it's not actually a paladin, it's really a Chaos Knight who, uh, you know, serves the Lords of, of Chaos. All right, so that's bad news, but now we know there is a, an evil overlord very, very, very near us. This is terrible news, okay? Um, he will be uh, maybe... <laughs> Maybe the the big bad evil guy of our campaign. Um, okay, so next up, we need to determine how many population centers are there. So on page 135, we will use the wilderness subtable for barrens, hills, and mountains, and we're going to roll on the humanoid chart. So how many are there? There's zero to two. So we'll say three is uh, none, one or two. Okay, so there are no, there's no humanoid zero population centers. Okay, maybe the chaos lord destroyed every, uh, every one of them. For ruins, we have, these are like dungeons and other adventures. It's a D4 plus one. So we already have one, the lost tomb that we know about. So we're going to roll a D4. There's two more. There are two more ruins or dungeons or something in our hex. So we're going to find out where are they. Number two. That's all the way over here. Okay, so we've got a dungeon here. And we're going to just put a little D for dungeon. Oop, that's a B. Oh, my goodness. We're going to put a little D for dungeon. Okay. And then we're going to roll one more. 21. 21 is here. Ah, okay, so we have another dungeon here. Now, what are these dungeons? Now, you might not be able to see this, guys. I will fill this in with a black marker later. Uh, you know, one of my uh, commenters, he, he left a message suggesting erasable ink. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to pick up some erasable ink pens so that way I can darken this up and you guys will be able to see it a little bit better. 
But before we do that, because I haven't gotten around to the store yet, we're going to go to page number 12. And we're going to see what kind of dungeon is it going to be. So the first one is a D6. Move these out of the way. Four. It's a subterranean delve. So like a mine or um, yeah, maybe even connected to the Underdark. Ooh. Okay, we're actually going to put under dark ud this will be an under dark complex all right and then the next one will be four uh, also um but the, we're going to change it up this one will be a mine all right now we need to know what monsters are in these two other dungeons so we have an under dark and a mine. We're going to find out what kind of monsters are in them. Okay, so let's see. We've got all kinds of charts. Let's see. Do we have like an underdark? Uh, no, no underdark table. Hmm. Yeah, let's see, how can we determine what would be down there? Maybe in... Ooh, yeah, well, we might have to do a little metagaming here and choose monsters that are down there. Hmm. Okay, well, how about this? We're going to continue to use the Baron's Hills and Mountains random chart and see what it is that it gives us. And maybe we could use like variations of those monsters to make it make sense for the Underdark. Okay, so <clears throat> in the first one, our, uh, we're gonna roll a D8 to see what it is. That, so, okay, the difference in a dungeon and a lair, a dungeon has a couple of different uh, factions vying for control. So we're actually gonna roll two different uh, factions for each dungeon. A lair is just one kind of monster. So, let's roll a d8 to see what the first faction will be. Five. Humanoids. That makes sense. Perfect. So, we're going to go to subtable B. Baron's Hills. Humans. Oh, humanoids. Sorry. Here. Okay. And we will roll a d20 for this. 14 on the humanoid is orcs. Orcs are in the dungeon. Orcs are in the dungeon. And that is just one faction. The other faction will be, let's roll both of these at the same time, 1 and 19. So 1 animals of some kind, okay. Uh, we go to subtable B, we go to animals, and then 19 on the die. So all the way down, dire wolves. Okay, so, oh, okay, so uh, this is a subterranean deal, so maybe like, the orcs are trying to invade the the dire wolf's cave. Oh, okay. So whenever the heroes get down there, they're gonna be they're gonna be vying for control. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, let's come over to the mine. Now we're gonna do this process again. There will be at least two factions. I say two is pretty good. I'm gonna roll a d8 on the mountain hill chart. We get a three, a dragon and a six on the dragon one table. That's actually over here. Uh, the dragon one table, uh, six is a copper dragon, a lawful bro. He's been hiding down in this mine. Oh man, and he's just in the shadow of the evil overlord. Oh, what is he doing battle against? Let's find out. Six humanoids, 11. On table B, that's over here. These are humanoids, right? Yeah. Humanoids, 11. Jackal wares. An army of jackal wares are terrorizing. Jackal wares are terrorizing this, this good dragon. We need to go rescue him. We need to go help him, you know? And maybe he'll reward us with some with just a fraction of his treasure. Or an, maybe a magic item? Yeah, maybe. Okay, so we've got... Uh, uh, we've got a, a dungeon here, a dungeon here. We don't know these are here yet. Remember, we have not mapped our hex. 
Okay, so we've got the dungeons taken care of. Well, now we're going to layers. So layers are strictly one kind of beast. So it's a D4 plus two. Let's see how many we get. One plus two. So three, you guys can see it, three different layers. These are the, the ruins over here. Over here, we're going to do layers. One two, and three. All right. Layer, not layer, layer number one. We're going to use the same chart to dictate what it is, only this time there's no competition. Instead, we multiply the number appearing by five, and that's what's going to populate their space. Oh, we haven't populated this space yet. We can do that in a moment. Once we get all of the monsters listed, then we'll just go through and populate everything. All right, here we go. Five humanoids. 11 on the chart for the humanoids. Ooh, oh wait, hold on, let me make sure I got that right. jack wares again, did we do that last time? Oh, we rolled a six with an 11. Okay, yeah, still, it's jack wares okay. So we have a jackalware lair. So we know that they're lairing somewhere here, and they've sent some of their troops in to harass the dragon. So let's find out where is the jackalware lair. Where do the jackalware lair? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, 17 is here. Okay, so it's actually not too far, not too far away. We'll put a little sign for the jackalwares. Where do the jackal wear lair? All right, they layer here. Okay. Next up, we've got two more. Let's find out. Five humanoids again, but this is just number one on the humanoids. Dwarves. Okay, we've got some dwarves nearby. Not bad. Okay, so where are the dwarves located? 25. Oh, you know what I'm noticing is like everything's kind of like clustered up over on this side. But uh, the dwarves are over here. We got a deep dwarven delve. Dwarves. Okay, we got dwarves over here. Yeah, it's all kind of clustered up on this side. Let's see if we can fill up the space over here. All right. We've got dwarves, and the last, we can just roll all three at once. Okay, so that's a 14, a 13, and eight. So first we go to eight, Un something unusual. We go to subtable two. Is that what this one is, subtable two? Yeah, okay, go to unusual. We rolled a 14. Werewolves, werewolves, and they are nesting down here on the 13, so here we've got the werewolves. Woohoo! Werewolves. We got dire wolves. We got werewolves. We got jackal wares. Oh man, there's some themes emerging over here. Okay, so we got werewolves. Now, now we're going to find out how many of each of these there are. So, to do that, we just go to their monster listing. Let's see, uh, For oh, let's start with orcs, right? Uh, orcs. Oh, orcs. So numbers appearing in a dungeon, 1d6 times 10. So that is 1d6 times 10 is, th uh, they got a three on the die. I don't know if you guys could see that. I have a tendency of moving off of the, uh, let me just make sure I'm like even remotely close. Okay, you guys can all see all that. Excellent. Okay, um, so there are 30 orcs. We're going to put a 30 here. How many dire wolves are there? Uh, any more O's? Okay. Wolves. I, you know, I don't know if it's under wolves or dire wolves. So let's first go to wolf. I think wolf probably makes more sense. W, W, O. Dire wolves, okay. 2d4, let's go ahead and roll that up. And this will be how many are in their their cave network. We've got three dire wolves. Well, these are big boys too. They're gonna, 
they're going to put up quite a fight. Okay, the uh, dragons, numbers appearing, always going to be one. Okay, jackal wares. Now we have a couple of those. A couple entries for those. A little too far. Going to Jay's. Okay, Jackal Wears on page 71. Ah, okay, okay. So uh, the number appearing in the in the dungeon is 1D4. So there's only one here. He, why is a single Jackal Wear harassing the Copper Dragon? Who knows? Maybe he's just trying to antagonize him or scare him or something. Um, but what we have is in their layer, we have 1d4 times 5. So let's, or is it time? Uh, yeah, it's 1d4 times 5. So here we go. 1 times 5. There are 5 in their actual layer. Okay. Are these, yo, these guys are tough. Four hit die. They have bites and they can do weapon attacks. They have a plus 3 to hit. They can only be harmed by magic. They can put people to sleep. Ooh, these dudes are tough. Okay, and uh, two and ten, ch two and ten chance of being encountered with two d six normal jackals. Let's see if these guys have normal jackals, which they say treat uh, treat as just a wild dog in the stat book. So a one or a two. No, they don't have any of those. Okay. Now, how many dwarves? are in the Dwarven Kingdom. But just a little too far here. Oh, well, we're already on dragon, so let's just do dragon real quick. Uh, dragon's already got, uh, just one. Okay, uh, dwarf, 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 DW. Dwarf, okay. 5d8 times five. Okay, so we're gonna need all my d8s here. That's two, three, One more D8. What do we have? Okay, I'm going to have to pull this a little closer. Where are my D8s? I should have a white one. Ah, oh, here we go. Okay. We're going to multiply this number by five. Oh, looky, looky. Okay, we got 18 here. Uh, we have 24. 25, this is a massive develop, 125 dwarves. You know, that might be the only reason why this guy hasn't taken over. There's 125 dwarves that are just causing chaos against the Chaos Lord. Okay, and the pack of werewolves, the last thing we're going to check. Yeah, I think that's under L's for lycanthropy. Werewolves. Okay, so we got 2d6, and we're going to multiply that by 5. Uh, 4. Okay, 9 times 5. 45 werewolves. Yo! They are stacked. They are stacked. Now, if we catch them in their human form, they're really not as dangerous, but they're going to they're gonna go uh, beast mode as soon as they can, jump their armor class up. Yeah, these guys are tough. Groups of five plus are led by a werewolf with five HD. Oof. He's a plus two. Hmm. Okay. So we have got uh we've got a fully fleshed out layer system. We've got oh some hamlets. Okay. So that's a D6 plus two. Okay, so there are gonna be seven hamlets. These are uh small um small little like uh civilizations like little like tiny uh, groups of groups of families of like four to five families not a lot but uh, we are going to go ahead and map them and put them down so it's page 135 and we roll on the humanoid chart all right we are winding down now this is the last little detail we're going to roll on the humanoid chart oh here okay so there are seven of these in total, and we are going to, these are like small clusters. So let's go ahead and see what it is that we end up with. Eight gnomes. There's 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven total. Uh, there's a little village of gnomes. Eleven is the jackal wares. So this is like an independent group of jackal wares. Maybe they're outcasted from the uh, from the other lair. Uh, we also have ooh, frost giants, massive enemy, a very small cluster of frost giants somewhere up in the hills. Seventeen, a titan, a titan. I don't even know exactly what that means, but it's scary. <laughs> All right, uh, number five. We got nine. Goblins, a goblin clan, Oop, goblin clan. All right, and then the last uh, so number six is ten. A black hag, a black hag, Granny. I'm gonna put black in parentheses here. A black hag. This hex has got some adventure to unfold. Last thing, twelve cobalts. Okay. Now, we can we can map these little guys, and then that will be it for the episode. Um, let me make sure I've got all my features. Yeah, well, okay, we can do all that later. All right, cool, perfect. Yeah, so let's go ahead and find out where these people are. And I'm just going to put a, a number for them and then refer back for their little hamlet later. It'll be a, a group of maybe 20 people at tops. 19. Where's my 19, 18, 19. Okay, so we're going to put number one here. The, uh, the renegade jackal wares are at 17. Oh, but they're in the same area as the jackal wares. You know what we could do? We could double their numbers. We're just going to double their numbers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Destiny has decided there's a small hamlet and there's the lair there. So they're going to double their numbers. Okay. Uh, next up. That is a 16. Uh, 16, we have the frost giants. Okay. Ooh, number one. All the way on the other side, the Titan lives alone. The far reaches. 30. Oh, right next to the Hamlet, we have the goblins. Oh, the little gobbos coming to cause mischief and all sorts of trouble. Okay. Uh, where does the hag live? 15. Man, everything's kind of like clustered up. The hag is at 15. And the Cobalt's at 23. 23. Got the Cobalt's. All right. That is it. So if you have any ideas for more names, we did get a Theros Jr. option. So we'll see if that works out for us. Um, but any more names, go ahead and put those in the comments, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. This is how you build a hex using, uh, using old school essentials. And you can play and do all this stuff by yourself at home it's a, it's actually really fun to build a world so now i i will send out a druid and a scout and we are going to start mapping out each of these hexes we're not going to find anything for a bit but th unless if we end up going this way we'll find out the dice are going to determine that but we're going to hit a bunch of different things we're going to have adventures we're going to unlock dungeons that my other heroes can go investigate it's going to be a great time all right guys see you next time